Hello, one of the questions we get asked a lot is how to inspect BGAs or ball grid arrays. So in this video, uh, I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks on how to determine if your BGA is good or bad. Just as a quick introduction, ball grid arrays uh, are devices like this one here, right? Uh, they are bottom terminator components uh, so that all the connections of the device are underneath the package so that you don't really have access. You can't really see if the solder connection is good or bad unless you use an x-ray machine. Uh, here we have, uh, I can show you guys uh, the pads, how they look like without a BGA and that's the BGA. So once you place the BGA, the pads are completely obscure and you can't, uh, as I said, you can't inspect them unless you use an x-ray machine. Uh, the image that I have here is an x-ray uh, of a bulgate array of a BGA that we took. BGA is inside the machine and uh, as you can see here, you, you're looking at uh, this device uh, on a, a perspective, right? So this is a, an example of a uh, two and a half D image or a tilted view. So what we do is we take the camera or the x-ray sensor inside the machine and we tilt it at about uh, 45 degrees to give you this oblique view. And the oblique view allows you to not only find um, uh, voids, shorts and opens, but also allows you to see um, head and pillow and some other problems that your BGA uh, can have. This BGA specifically is the best BGA x-ray image you can ask for. Why? Because it's the worst BGA ever built. This BGA has every single problem you can have on a BGA in one image. Very, very, very impressive. So let me walk you through some of the issues that we have here and hopefully uh, if you see some of these features on your X-ray uh, machine, on your uh, BGA, you can tell that something's wrong. So let's start with uh, coplanarity. Coplanarity is when the board sits flat but the BGA is tilted like this. I'm exaggerating of course but imagine instead of the BGA being perfectly coplanar with the board the BGA sits uh, at an angle and you can tell that on, on this image because as you can see here on the top left this uh, ball is perfectly round while as you move from left to right on the BGA, right here on the top uh, right, uh, you have this hourglass shape. This hourglass shape is formed when the BGA is departing from the board, it's tilted from the board, so that ball is stretched, right? And that's where you get this hourglass shape here. Uh, some of the other issues you're gonna see is excessive solder on, uh, on, a, on a ball and you end up with an oversized ball. This is usually caused by a defective stencil, so too much solder was applied on that specific ball. Or it can be caused because uh, due to lack of solder on the neighboring ball, which is what we have here. So on the left, this ball is not really a ball, it's basically a flat dome that doesn't have enough uh, volume of solder to make the connection with, with the board. Uh, and because of that, uh, you can see that some of the solder probably ended up on its neighbor. So we end up with a neighbor with one ball that's too big, the other one that's too small. Uh, voiding is a major issue. Voiding is when you have air or flux trapped inside the ball, uh, creating this void or lack of, vo of, of solder. And in a BGA ball that, is, um, that shows as a lighter image, on, on the ball. So here is uh, the saw, the dark area is the ball and the lighter area is uh, the void. Uh, some of the other issues as you go to the bottom right of the BGA is uh, head and pillow. Head and pillow, as you can see here, you have the ball um, barely touching or making uh, on and off contact, electrical contact, mechanical contact with the pad on the board. So the ball is sitting uh, like a heading pillow on the board. And what's gonna happen is that sometimes due to mechanical stress uh, or temperature variations, that ball is gonna make contact with the board and it can also open and 
make uh, an open context. Uh, usually what happens is, uh, when it's in your facility, it's gonna make electrical contact. As soon as you ship to your customer, it's gonna open, right? So the customer's gonna call and say, hey, my board doesn't work. And you say, well, I tested it, it worked perfectly. So anyway, Murphy's Law always works. Uh, as you keep moving down, um, uh, on the bottom, la bottom right of this BGA, you have an open ball. So an open ball, instead of a heading pillow where it barely touches and it has this on and off contact, an open ball is detached from the board. So it's always open. Uh, uh, let's keep uh, walking down here. Uh, here in the center, you see a short. So this ball and this na the neighboring ball are shorted together, creating uh, a problem, right? Uh, voiding we saw as a lighter area and in this BGA you have quite a bit of voiding yeah, several balls you can see um, quite a bit of voiding uh, there's what we call micro voiding is when you have small uh, voids on, on, on a ball like this one and they depending on where the, the void is like this one it's at the surface between uh, the, the, the ball and um, and the board, you might have uh, micro cracks that can develop opens or any pillows as this um, board is stressed over time. Uh, here you have a ball that was knocked off uh, during assembly. So the ball, you can see the pad with a little bit of solder, but there's no, um, no solder uh, on this specific ball. The other issue that we have on this BGA is solder splatter. You see here, 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 in a bunch of different places, solder splatter. Uh, the issue with solder splatter is that it doesn't often, doesn't stay in one place, it likes to travel. Uh, and that solder splatter that started its life here might migrate in short uh, two balls. So this splatter is caused usually by uh, an issue with the, uh, with the reflow cycle of your reflow oven. Uh, if it's too hot, those uh, voids that have flux trapped might pop, uh, creating this uh, splatter uh, all over uh, your assemblies. We also have an issue with uh, uh, the, the solder mask on this, on this board. Uh, as you know, solder mask is designed to trap the solder within the pad. If you have a solder mask that's defective, that solder can just run outside the pad and what happens is the amount of volume of solder you think you have to make a connection to the board is now reduced because some of that volume ran through the, 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 the trace uh, on that, uh, on the, on under or on top of the solder mask if the solder mask is not there anymore. So I hope this, I hope this was helpful. Uh, feel free to give us a call if you have any other questions in how to inspect your BGSM. Thanks for watching. Quite what you want.